So I want you to give a warm welcome to Mr. Charles Richman Goodman Jr. Hey, that's close. That's close. I was close. Yeah. So he's speaking to us this morning on behalf of the Gideons. You can go up and make yourself at home, and um, we're glad that you're here and appreciate the ministry that you're involved in. Answer to any name. Oh. Children's Church. My bad. Y'all see, we do miss Pastor Bart. I told him I could pick up his slack. If uh, you have a child that would like to attend Children's Church, Miss Tori will lead them out. And Miss Tina. It's all good. Good morning. Oh, no, you don't know me. Good morning. Grace and peace be with you this day. I'm honored to be worshiping here at Barnwell First Baptist Church. I've passed by this church many times in my life. I'm very familiar with this area, uh, very excited to be here. A friend of mine called me several years back and said, Charles, I've done something you'd be proud of. That's how you start a phone call, by the way. And I said, what did he do? He said, I bought a treadmill. I said, I bought a treadmill. He said, but I got a problem. I, I need you to help me come and put this treadmill together. I went over to their house and went in this room like a bomb of parts and went off. And I asked what I thought was the most appropriate question. Did you follow the instructions? And I got the common answer. Well, I thought I could put this treadmill together by looking at the picture on the box. And then, you know, two big boxes in the corner, it says some assembly required. And that's obviously that's false. You can't assemble some of it, can you? So we started, followed the instructions, and a few hours later, we had a working treadmill. You see, the only source for figuring out a complex piece of machinery or equipment is to go to its maker, its manufacturer. The only place that can really tell you how those parts are to come together and fit and to work correctly and wholly is to go to its manufacturer, its maker. And the maker had a list, a book, that had all the information, had all the information, the instructions, the how-tos, the what-nots, the troubleshooting, the example. Good people, the same is true for you and I. There's only one source for you and I to put the pieces of our life together, the complicated pieces that make us who we are, for us to turn to our maker. And God has given us the instructions on paper, the what to and the how nots and the things to avoid and the examples to use and live by. God's word, the Holy Bible. There is no substitute for God Almighty. I don't care how much property, power, or possessions you have or will acquire in this life. There is no filling a place in our life other than what God can do. And because there is no substitute for God, there is no substitute for God's word. We live in a world where people have tried to fill the void in their life by things, power, possessions, property, addictions, even other persons. But there's no substitute for God and there's no substitute for God's word. And if that is true for you and I, which I believe fundamentally that it is, it's also true for others. And that is at the core of why I'm a Gideon is to ensure that every man, woman boy and girl, has access to God's Word, the Holy Bible. You and I are charged in Scripture to share and demonstrate to all the world the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Does anybody here think that a Bible that wound up in a hotel room got there by chance? No. It got there by choice. Discipleship is about decision making. 
how we demonstrate our lives, the decisions that we make. Do we live our faith out? Do we demonstrate in how we walk and talk that we're children of God who have a loving and ongoing relationship with him? My challenge for you this day is turn to God's word. If you want to put the pieces of your life together, if you want to repair and rebuild and reunite and restore the broken places and pieces and relationships that you and I all have, that our families and all, and in all the situations that we encounter, there's nothing better that we can do than to turn to God's word for its guidance, to reveal God's will, to reveal God's ways, for us to become as God desires and demands us to become. Years ago, uh, Gideon was approached by an elderly lady and the lady started crying as soon as she got close to the Gideon and he said, ma'am, how can I help you? And she said, I just wanted to tell you about my grandson. You see, this lady went on to explain that she had had a falling out with her daughter. Her daughter had had issues with addiction and for many years had been estranged, but she had a little boy. And she said, do y'all remember going to so-and-so elementary school and passing out testaments? And the Gideon said, yes, ma'am, I do. And she said, well, two months ago, my grandson was killed in a car accident. I didn't know my grandson really. I saw him only a few times in the last few years. I don't believe he set foot in a church more than two or three times in his life. But when y'all gave him that little testament, that was one thing that he, he was proud of, and he showed it to me when I saw him one time. She said he was proud of it because it was his. And she said, I believe my grandson is in heaven Today, And she showed the Gideon where her grandson had signed the little testament, given his life to the Lord. And she said, I believe my grandson is in heaven today because Jesus spoke to him through that testament. And she said, I believe I'll see my grandbaby once again. And I leave you with this. I love vacation Bible school. Last couple of years, a lot of churches, because of COVID and issues, didn't have vacation Bible school up until not long ago. And there was a vacation Bible school held. Teacher was teaching a class of eight and nine-year-olds. And about a few minutes into the start of class, a lady came to the door, and she had a little boy with her. And she said, Miss Beverly, I've got David to join your class. And the Miss Beverly, the Sunday school teacher, said, well, come on in. And she looked and she saw that David had a physical handicap. He was missing the bottom half of his left arm. Little boy came in and they went about their vacation Bible school time doing all the fun stuff we do at vacation Bible school. Crafts and songs and different stuff and everything was, was good. David was having a good time. This teacher had taught Sunday school, vacation Bible school for many years. And she always closed her time with the kids by sharing that little rhyme that many of us know. Here's the church and here's the steeple. And open up and here's the people. But as soon as she said it, she realized this little boy... This little boy couldn't put his hands together. But without hesitation, a little girl in class extended her hand. And she said, David, take my hand. We'll make the church together. And the little girl and the little boy joined hands Here's the church, and here's the steeple, and open up, and here's the people, and may God be with us this day. My challenge for this church and for everyone here 
is to understand that you and I have a responsibility to extend our hand to a world broken and in need of God's love, care, and light, and in desperate need of God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give a hand for Mr. Goodman. So the band's coming and uh, go sing a song. And during this song, we take up a special offering for the Gideons. Um, Pastor Bard asked everyone to take home a New Testament and pray over it last week and, and what your offering would be. So during this time, if you would, and while this song is going on, we're going to ask that you would just bring your offering and lay it right here on this table at the altar. And uh, that money will all go directly to uh, the Gideon Ministry, a great organization for, for Bible specifically. And, um, and they're also asking if you would be interested in uh, taking a Bible, putting it in your car, or keeping it in your desk at work. You never know when the times will present for you to need God's Word and be able to hand that to somebody. So as this song plays, and as God lays on your heart, give accordingly to the Gideons and lay it on the front here. I get to introduce my brother. Come on up, Sunil. And um, as you can tell, we're probably not you know, biological brothers. Um, he's a little more tan than me. But uh, we have a love for the Lord that makes us brothers, don't we? And uh, he has an awesome testimony. Uh, he's asked to share it. Uh, this is his time. Uh, so if you will, give him uh, your attention. And uh, we know that God's going to speak in and through him. Brother, it's all yours. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. Um, can we start with prayer? Thank you, Lord, for giving us this time, giving us a day, and giving us a chance that we could be in your house, and um, we worship you, and uh, we also uh, get fed for our spiritual lives uh, through here, Lord. We thank you for everybody that put uh, this together, and thank you for still uh, keeping me here and uh, keep standing me here at your pulpit to um, give you praise, worship, and tell people how gracious, mighty full you are, Lord. And uh, I don't know why I'm here to... Um, give the testimony, but whoever it is for, Lord, uh, we pray that, you know, that goes to them. And uh, we also pray that um, the glory only be to you uh, and praise to you, Lord. We ask thee in the name of the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. I'm usually back of the house kind of a guy. So me being here, in case uh, if I say anything wrong, please excuse me. I know who's one person who's the most happiest is my wife. She'd want to see me here, and I get scared of pulpit most of the time. <laughs> but uh, if you go in there, um, I wanted to just take you guys through. I know uh, December 12th is the day that I fell down, got airlifted to the hospital. And in less than two weeks, I'm back walking, running around like uh, nothing really happened because I really don't remember nothing. I went through so much, uh, the family, the church, the community, Friends, uh, the people who went through a lot, they prayed, they came together, they stood by the family, and I'm here. But what I wanted to say was uh, the testimony is mostly um, to say, why did it happen only here? You know, this is the best place it could have happened. If it could have happened anywhere I would have picked in the world, I probably couldn't have picked a better place, but I didn't pick that one. He did, 10 years ago. and. The only reason I'm here is to tell you, um, even though I probably would not have picked all the way from India to Bonneville here, but I would have picked a lot of other places he showed us even before we stepped foot up here. And when we realized it was God's will and how he spoke through us uh, with the GPS, <laughs> you know why we're here, that's important. So if we can start there, I wanted to um, say that, you know, back in 2009 was the first time we, uh, we landed in America. And, you know, that's when he gave us, uh, we didn't know if it was even right choice to move. We were doing really good back home. But when he spoke to us, he spoke to us through uh, Genesis 46, 1, 3, and 4, 
where it said, And Israel took his journey with all that he had. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with, the, with thee in Egypt, and I will also finally bring thee upon again. Right? <laughs> bring thee upon again. Now, we were here. All things was good. Um, but there was a time where we had to go back to India back in 2013. That was not something we had planned. And um, even before that, you know, in God spoke to us again when Supriti went into a particular place where everything was going good. We were thinking we're going to go to the next step and stuff like that, right? Um, it's important that, you know, sometimes uh, when God takes us to certain things, uh, we never should look at it from what is good for us, bad for us. Sometimes we just need to follow what he tells us to and. Um, in the long run, um, he will show us why he tells us to do certain things. And we're yet here as example for that, and that is my testimony. I mean, I'm healed. I'm the best way possible. I will tell you that. But the biggest thing is I want to say why it is important to uh, follow his word, why it's important to seek his guidance, and why it is important when he speaks to us to just blindly follow it. Even if we don't see where it is taking us, how it is going to go, if it is not what we want to do, right? So, um, just want to give you an example. Uh, when when she walked into a particular building, we'll never see uh, Bible verses there. But this particular place, there was a Bible verse right when she walked in, right? Romans eight twenty eight. What it says is, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So when, when you read this thing, the biggest thing was that, you know, when she came back, I said, look what I found. This is what it was. I said, all right, then that's good. What's going to uh, happen is everything's going to happen. We're going to be settled down. Everything is good. That's what I thought, <laughs> you know, uh, in worldly way. But uh, what it was was it didn't work out. We did everything right, whatever was supposed to be, uh, paperwork-wise, moral-wise, everything. But nothing worked out. We had to go back home pack everything and go back home. We are like, what is going on? Why all this happening? We did everything possible that we were supposed to as um, you know, individuals, as um, citizens where we're staying at, and even Christian side too, we tried to the best we could. But it had to go back home. So I personally was really mad to the extent when we all left, packed our stuff and went back home I didn't, I even lost the visa papers because I never wanted to step back in America again. There really was, because I never seen um, from the point of view that, you know, a loss, a big um, uh, setback and stuff like that, and it almost, I took it like a failure and I went back home because by law we were supposed to, so we did. But in no time, in almost, uh, almost a year time frame, you know, we are getting ready to go somewhere else, you know, in, in the world to see what we could do, you know, go somewhere, uh, settle down, and we were settling down where we came from. I didn't even apply back where, when I went back home, I didn't even go see family, friends, nobody. I thought, you know, I went back as a failure, did nothing. But the good Lord has both of his hands on us in ways that we cannot even dream, think, or do anything. I tell you to that extent, Supriti, I was still here wrapping up stuff. Uh, Supriti and kids went home. Sarah was about here with no insurance. I said, we can't take a risk like that. Put her on a plane, send her home. So she just walking around out there, literally walking in a place looking for a job and stuff like that. She stepped on a school. Can you believe a school that's an international school? It's a VVIP school where the biggest businessmen would be there. Um, you know, movie industry guys, or you could even name the best 10 people in the biggest city. That kind of school. She didn't even know the school was like that. Guess who was the person out there walked on and interviewed her? An international school, an American t principal out there, he looked at her and said, he thought you are an asset. We've been looking for somebody we couldn't, and he picked her up in one of the best schools. When I say... It's big city, like um, it's it's almost like um, I mean not as big as New York City or Miami, but uh, 
big city, how much importance it has in the country. It's one of those cities like that. So then I went back. I didn't even go meet my own family because to me that was a setback in a way I couldn't see nobody. My old bosses from Dell Computers, they called and said, I hear you here. I said, yeah, you're here. I said, yeah, at least for a couple of years I'm here. I said, well, come on down. Monday, that was a Thursday, Friday about that time. I said, come down Monday. I need you to jump on a project. We are starting a new process moving here. I need somebody there. I might go back and start working where I was working before I left come here, right? So I still didn't see no positive way in it. I thought there was a setback. But again, when um, we were getting ready to move somewhere, God spoke to us um, through uh, a pastor, um, Arul Prasad, and he spoke to us through Exodus 2320. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I had prepared. Right? This is when we were getting ready and um, we didn't even, we're not even looking back to come here. We didn't try anything like that. But because of a need, somebody reached out to us back in India. It said, hey, there is need here. We're looking for somebody. We needed to be placed something. That was 10 o'clock in the night back home. I mean, it was day here. So <laughs> back home, it was 10 o'clock in the night. Things are going on. And by almost 4 or 5 a.m. the same day, everything was set. Going back to America, everything, all the uh, interviews were done. Everything was done. And we, I was, me and Supriti were thinking, is God testing us right now? What is going on? Because we were getting ready to either go to... Uh, Dubai or Adelaide, Australia. Um, you know, that's where most of the Dell guys were, a lot of my friends and bosses went there, so I wanted to go there, you know. So then, the thing was, again, like I said, remember in anger, because I didn't want to step back here, I didn't even have visa paperwork with me to even give them, say that, you know, to come back here. So I said that, okay, you'd be the first Indian teacher to be hired and get fired even before you step foot in there. <laughs> so while well, we were thinking, we didn't know what was doing, we were trying to reach, we were thinking we'll reach out to some people, put things together to happen in such way that you know things work out. So then what happened? The school district didn't even have attorney because they didn't have international teachers at the time. So I said, they sent another email the next day morning, okay, this is our attorney, whatever he has, uh, fulfill the paperwork and uh, we'll take care of it. And I was like, that's it, <laughs> that's the end of it. But guess what the next email was? The next email was the attorney said, oh, this is Supriti Muktipuri. I have all her documents, all I need is a retainer signed. It's the same attorney, same attorney that we did all our paperwork from here, genuinely did have everything with him. Not from here, not from Columbia, not even from Charleston, not even in same state or Charlotte or Atlanta. This attorney stays all the way in New York. Tell me if it is not God's work. That's not something we could even think that could happen in practical world. So I said, pack your bags. He ain't testing us. He's telling us to go down here. That's what we discussed and we came here. Now, I don't know why. I mean, I, I think God has more work uh, for us to do. But um, what I went through in December... Um, I mean, I'm happy that, you know, Godria, you know, gave me all my health back uh, physically, mentally, in every which way. But the biggest thing was, um, there's another feeling that I even, not even normally share with Supriti because I don't like to see a sadness. I lost my parents at a very early age, you know, like 1920s when I, uh, about 21 probably is when, 20s when I lost my dad. And about 22 years age is when I lost my mama, right? Now, the reason I think that, you know, it was God willing and why uh, we stuck here was um, if this situation, what we went through in December 12th with me falling, getting airlifted, being in hospital and stuff like that, in any big town, big city in America, I don't know how things could have been. But what I would have wanted is some elderly person, dad, or somebody over me said, son, go to sleep, take medication, we got everything taken care of. That was something that was provided by Barnwell County and First Baptist Church and our friends here, okay? He knew what I would have wanted.
He prepared it 10 years ago. I'm glad that uh, we saw that, that it was his will and uh, we stuck to it. You know, this right here, guys, most of the time I'm telling you, this really is GPS. He will speak to you. This is a phone, a phone, the direct line to God. He will speak to you through this one. Now, me, I can't back up with a lot of Bible verses, but he speak to me not just through here, through songs that, um, that we listen to, um, through when you know, God speaks through, through his children in many which ways. But I am thankful that uh, I know somebody who has a direct contact all the way to the God. Thankfully, that's my wife. You know, she, she keeps everything straight. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, that's the only one who keeps me straight in many ways. But what I was saying was when the reason I'm saying is there were many times we were supposed to leave out of here and go somewhere too. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. The old employers where um, Supriti worked, they called her many times saying that, hey, you're here, it's easy for us to just do some paperwork, get you out of here, you can come to big cities here, this and that. But Supriti said, no, I, I don't want to go. You know, Ban will put so much time and effort into us, you know, and there's more work we got to do, I don't want to go. And then when we were buying house also at that time, you know, Miss Darlene Cook was our realtor at that time helping us. We, there was a point where I did tell Miss Darlene is that, you know, we, got, we couldn't find nothing. I said, I think it is time to look for houses in Evans or Augusta. You know what Miss Darlene told me? Miss Darlene said, I'm not going to let you go out of the community here. You're good here. You're going to be here. That's exactly what she told me. Okay? I said, give me a couple weeks. There's another house that's going to come into the market. Um, you know, you get to see. Hopefully, that will work out for you. I said, okay. That's what we're going to do. And uh, what happened was, even at that house, I mean, mostly I'm trying to tell um, the youth um, and anybody who is still sometimes, you know, God will speak to us many ways. We just need to be able to hear. Okay, I'm just, I just wanted to tell you my way, how he speaks to me, right? That way maybe it connects with anybody and know that, you know, he can speak to us through that. So we tried to go in the house maybe three, four times, my darling. We could never step foot in the house. It didn't work out. So the last time when we went there, um, uh, that day it didn't work out, and that evening somebody else should have come seen it too. Ms. Darlene said it's not really fair that you, know, you came in so many times, it didn't work out, but if somebody goes in there like it, we might not get it. I got down right in the driveway, and I told Ms. Darlene, I said, I got money in my pockets, I want to give this as a down payment, that house is mine. <laughs> I like, how? How do we even know that house is ours? We didn't look inside. We don't know what the condition of the house is, nothing like that. I said, even if I seen, I probably wouldn't have known. I come from concrete houses, the maybe wooden houses, my first house, even if there was any mistake, I probably wouldn't have seen or known anyway. But the way I seen is, there was very simple. First thing was, um, like I said, you know, the, uh, the house number is 106, it's 7. I said, to me, seven is a whole number and a holy number. I said, that's first thing. Second thing is, I have peace when I step on this property. I always felt very peaceful every single time that I was there. Third thing was, I could hear church bells out there every time we'd stand there. Right? That's all I said. That's all I need. I don't know nothing else. It's the good Lord said that. Uh, and what Ms. Darlene said actually is pretty close to me. I said, you know, they don't want us to leave out of the community. It's not just Ms. Darlene's word. God brought us here for a reason, and we shouldn't be leaving. So I said we didn't want to go. So the reason I'm mentioning that point is that, you know, when God talks to us and gives us some guidance and directions, we got to stick to it. It don't matter what goes on, what comes in, and I probably, you know, I don't know how much more work work or how much more God's going to um, bless us out here, but I will tell you what I went through December 12th, falling down, getting airlifted. December 12th till December 21st, I don't remember anything, anything at all. I don't, I mean, I have so many church friends, family friends, um, family came to see me out there, I don't even know. Okay. But I wanted to tell you, I asked Supriti, turn around and said, I said, hey, how did you even handle this thing? 
because I didn't feel no pain. Maybe there was painkillers, so I didn't feel no pain. I don't remember nothing, so it's a different thing. She went through a whole lot than I went through, you know. So I asked her, how, does, how, is it, how did this go on? And that, that's, like as I said, you know, she keeps everything pretty tapped when it comes to, you know, God's work. She said, um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I, I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, I'll tell you why this particular verse is important. Uh, in India, on New Year's Eve, we go to church. We go to church at 10 in the night, all the way almost like uh, 2 or 3 in the morning. We, you know, we step our foot in the New Year in the church. There, at the end of the service, we pick up our yearly promise. So like how we came in and, you know, for the, for the mission work, you know, how we gave our donations like that. Everybody would come. The, the promises would be right here upside down, nobody knows what it is. So we go prayerfully, the, the preachers will prepare you the month of December to, for the promises. We go pick that up and go. About two, three years ago, this was my annual promise. And then people would call Supriti, the preachers and the family friends that has no connection to each other and they would give her the same verse. Even Preachers all the way in India, who we don't even know, they had some, um, some friends and, and the, the church and the goers in Colombia who we never even met. But they know about the situation. They were praying, and they would call Supriti and give Jeremiah 29, 11. And not only that, even our friends um, you know, bought her books to write notes down, and stuff like that, even on them, the same words. The other day, uh, we had prayer meeting at um, Jesus' house. That's when Sarah is saying that we're showing, showing that way. I'm like, what's going on, what's going on? I see Jeremiah 29, 11 out there at their house too. So God prepares us. What all I'm trying to say is sometimes he prepares us way ahead of time. And all it takes is for us to sit there, put our time and understand and follow what he says. And he definitely... I don't think I'm eligible even to stand here and speak, let alone the blessing, the way he has healed me. Like to the point a neurosurgeon personally calls and says, we don't get to give these kind of good news as often. So I did, did not want to write a report and leave it there. I fell down, I had a blood clot in my brain. You need to stop taking medication once you're done with it because it's almost gone. Less than seven weeks. Less than seven. <laughs> to the point, like every time we go there, people come see us and say, oh, this is the guy who recovered the fastest. When I walk on Walmart, IGA, anywhere, miracle man walking, that's what they say, <laughs> literally. And I'm telling you to the point that, you know how many people prayed? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I would have never thought these many people even I know that many people. To the point I'll tell you, not Gateway, Green Branch, right? That's Green Branch Church? All right, Church and Second Baptist Church. They had visiting preachers coming to preach on the New Year's Day, that Sunday, um, to their place. And uh, they were there on 31st night. I walked in the office to tell my friend, this guy said, hey, I'm heading out to church. You be careful, take care, because it's 31st night. You be careful, you know, how you deal with things. And I was stepping out. He said, all right, uh, Sonny, you take care. Uh, please be careful. There was a um, husband and wife in front. He said, are you the Sonny everybody praying for? I said, ma'am, I, I guess so, because one, I'm the only Sonny I know in town. Second, I went through... <laughs> Second, I went through something everybody has been praying for me. And she said, she started crying. I'm like, you know, I said, why? If, did, if I didn't recognize you, I'm sorry. My, my, I'm still a little bit not all the way there yet. She said, no, I didn't even think you could have been an Indian guy. Because I said, um, what she said is, that just makes me feel bad. It says that, you know, how under God, our God, 
we are brothers and sisters, like how Jeremy said the same thing before I step foot on here, is that we all are brothers and sisters under him, right? And um, what she had said was, every time she would call church to get prepared for the service on the New Year's Day, she said, they were fasting and praying in tears. I never stepped foot in that church. I don't even know the preacher of the church. But you know, I think what we did in 2013 to come down here is one of the most important thing. We listened to God's word and came here. That's what it's put us through um, the safest and the best way possible. Like I've been telling people, even if I were to dare to dream to ask for the best recovery, I don't think I could have asked half of what I got. Literally half of what I got. That's how good he has blessed me. Now I'm gonna tell you a couple of last things before I close is why I decided to be with First Baptist Church when I came in. And I wanted you all to know you all do a good job on one thing. Um, one thing is the mission work First Baptist does is awesome. And the reason I bring that word is um, a lot of the time we might or might not see the result of it, the work that, um, you know, mission work, like this generation, what is doing. Sometimes we see the output of it, sometimes don't. My mom had one picture about maybe postcard about this size. She always kept it and prayed for them. I never understood why. There, I don't even know if it was Europe or America who the mission people were. So they sponsored her, I don't know, either for education or the Christmas gifts and stuff like that. They would pray for her and send. I know even almost close to her end of her life, my mom prayed for them. And I am one of those people, whoever those mission work people that were there, that did the job for her, you know, she always included them in their prayer. And she, I'm sure it definitely helped her to be with the good Lord. And she raised us in such a way that it is those mission people's work. And every time I see First Baptist put some mission work together, you have no idea how happy it makes me feel. Just about Gideon too. I mean, I didn't know any of the um, mission works. In India, spreading God's word is not easy. It is, it is good, it, it happens a lot, but in some places it is not. But even in those places, you know what do you see? The New Testament right there, what Gideon puts it out there. So. You know, I pray and thank uh, for the Gideon organization too, and I'm just happy to meet the Gideon people from the time I'm coming to First Baptist down here. Just last point, um, and then I will conclude, is a lot of the time people ask me during December 12th till did I come out even in hospital, like, you know, I did not want to close the restaurant, I wanted to do this, 23rd I got discharged, 29th. I went to work and did catering job on the day of Christmas, this and that. <laughs> My staff said, you better sit there and get Supriti to tie his hands off, otherwise he moves out, he's gonna get up and work. But what I wanted to say was, um, I, I didn't have answer. And I, I, I was surprised, why didn't I say my dad, my preacher, some of the you know, godly children, why I couldn't say who, who, because of who I am who I am. I didn't have no answer. I didn't even say God's name. But I came back and um, on the 25th, I testified uh, right in the merge when we have our Christian service, a Christmas service, um, is the elderly ladies in the church are the reason who I am. That is the truth. So I just wanted to thank and um, tell the people sitting right in here that you guys touch a lot of people. That is very, 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 very important. The amount of love these women show, like as men, we do a lot of things, but the, in church, the elderly women they show is unbelievable. They built me from step by step at age eight, nine, 10 years old. They, they started allocating me church, you know, God-related work, small works here, whatever we could do. I have a restaurant. I never worked a single day in a restaurant before I opened it. But I know in churches I did a lot. Again, it's those ladies who's the one who prepared me for it. So I wanted to thank all of them, but I also wanted to tell the ladies who are here who does so much work that, you know, it means a lot to a lot of people. And I just wanted to thank from all of those guys and from my side too. So I, I want to um, 
end with one last thought. I always tell people, in the Lord's army, what do we do and what's our job? You know, if really is the army, if we set it up, let's say there could be planes, tanks, maybe knights on horses. My job, the most that I like is in the front line, just the shield and my sword. This is the one, right? So I just want to leave that thought for you guys to see what work do we have. And um, the good Lord also has a lot of connections. He could be the father, he could be friend, he could be mom, he could be anything. To me, he's my owner. He's literally my owner. He tells me anything, I want to do it. So please keep me in prayer. I don't know what work he has for me that I understand exactly what he says and I just follow it to the point that I shouldn't even kneel down and ask for strength. I just want to do it. Okay? So thank you and praise the Lord. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank you, you, Sunil. Good job. Let's give God a hand for working and giving him an awesome testimony. Good.